The mesmerizing Uyuni soil flats are one of South America's most astonishing sights and is the main reason for my visit to Bolivia. In this video, I'll show you some of my highlights of what you can expect if you decide to visit. It's five o'clock in the morning, bright and early. We are about to start our three day, two night tour. Good morning. It's 40 something degrees outside. It's gonna be hot later. Okay. I had my first great night sleep. Thank God for that oxygen. Now we're gonna go pack up the truck and get ready to head out. So let's go. 5, 10 a.m. and they are packing up the truck. And look who it is, 15 minutes late, as usual. Seriously. Okay, now she has an attitude. No, because it's freaking 5 o'clock in the morning. I have to lug my suitcase all the way around. Up, she's upset. She has to lug her suitcase all the way to the van like every one of us. And this is Paul helping to pack up the van. The best way to see the Iuni Soul Flats is on a three-day tour combined with all the other incredible sights in this area. Showing us around for three days was La Torge Tours with ID who took great care of us and Vicente, our trusted driver. There are many different tours available to the Iuni Soul Flats and they basically follow a similar itinerary. The Jeep will be spending a lot of time in seat six people max. If you prefer something more comfortable, then four people to your Jeep would be ideal. And remember, not all seats in the Jeep are created equally. How long have we been driving? Three and a half hours. We've been driving about three and a half hours now. Our first stop to have breakfast. You know, we stopped to get our breakfast and everyone is getting their tea. Everyone is getting their tea. They gave me this tea. It said it's for to calm you down. And here is Polly having his lemon cake. I don't know what's going on back there. But the llamas are migrating, it seems like. This is what you got to do when you're out here in these open plains. While the Iuni salt flats are definitely the highlight of the trip, they're really only a small part of this breathtaking region. The landscape is truly unique and you'll be amazed at how beautiful it really is. After driving several hours, we made it to Termas de Polques. Termas de Polques is a surreal paradise. There's a small hot spring pool here as well, not boiling by any means, but suitable for taking a therapeutic dip. There's a pool here, which is really nice, supposed to be hot, but nobody wants to get in because we're tired from driving seven hours. The mineral rich waters are believed to relieve the symptoms of arthritis. After soaking up as much of the beauty around us as we could, we ate a quick lunch and headed right back on the road. Next stop, Sol de Manana. Sol de Manana is a geothermal area sitting at an altitude of 15,912 feet. This beautiful, outer-worldly landscape is lined with geysers, bubbling mud pots, and the distinct smell of sulfur. You can walk around here, but please be careful. The temperatures in the volcanic pool can reach upwards of 392 degrees Fahrenheit. You'll definitely want to ensure you bring a camera to capture your experience here at Sol de Manana, as the view here is second to none. Where'd it go, Fluff? <laughs> oh, I don't know how cold it is out there, but it's freezing. It's windy. Paul got splashed, almost burnt. Had to rescue him. Oh. It was a good time. It was definitely adventurous. Walking through steam, I think I got some of my ears. <sighs> From geysers to lagoons, Laguna Colorado, also known as the Red Lagoon, is a shallow salt lake in the southwest of the Altiplano of Bolivia within Eduardo Averroa and Dian Fauna National Reserve and close to the border of Chile. Dotted with white islands of massive borax deposits, the nearly 15,000 acre salt lake is less than three feet deep and is tinted blood red due to a variety of algae which thrive in the salt water. The reserve around Laguna, Colorado is home to a wide variety of indigenous birds and animals that amazingly thrive in this hostile landscape. Three of the world's six flamingo species, Chilean, Andean, and James flamingos, inhabit the freshwater lakes and saltwater lagoons of the reserve. The reserve also provides habitat to mammals including pumas, Andean foxes and cats, domesticated llamas, and alpacas, just to name a few. A 
After driving for almost the entire day, we finally made it to Hotel Taika del Desierto where we spent the night. If you ever make it here, it is important to understand the limitations that the environment and altitude creates. With this in mind, you will not be disappointed. Oh shit, what a long ass day. Yeah, most of the day we spent driving. Like literally, what, about 10 hours driving? Like all day. It was a little rough, I will admit. It was rough, we were all fighting each other. <laughs> yes, and tomorrow we're back at it again. That's it, I think we're gonna sign off for tonight. Yes. And we'll pick back up tomorrow, so see you guys soon. All right, so how, how'd you sleep last night? How was your night last night? I slept great. Okay, you, I couldn't sleep. I kept waking up every <laughs> two hours because of this altitude. I had some help sleeping, but um, it was great. <laughs> All right, you excited for today? I am. I'm excited to see what's on the list of things to do, and hopefully it's not going to be too cold. We're all bundled up, ready to go, prepared today, as opposed to yesterday where we were not prepared for cold. All right, <laughs> let's go then. <laughs> That right there is ice in the desert. Hey, look at that little thing like he's holding it up. <laughs> that is hilarious. Our first stop of the day was at Laguna Onda, another saltwater lagoon near the border of Chile. Here you'll hop out of your Jeep and walk down to the lagoon and walk about a kilometer along the western shore of the lagoon to its northern end where your jeep will be waiting for you. The walk along the bank of the lagoon is very pleasant. Mother Nature got really creative here as you'll see from the lagoon's numerous places of interest. The walk along the shore takes about 30 to 40 minutes. Between the hundreds of flamingos and the mountains in the backdrop, this view will stay imprinted in my memory forever. Mom. Mais um dia maravilhoso e nessa terra. We made a quick stop for lunch, then back to our hotel, Cristal Samana Salt Hotel, to relax and prepare for another exciting day tomorrow. Alrighty. After a long day on the road, we finally made it in to our hotel. Here's the room. It's actually pretty nice. Wow. Definitely a lot better than the other one. Nice. We even got a balcony. How beautiful. Muy bonito. So, yep. Here is our hotel for the night. It's not bad at all. What's going on, folks? It's bright and early, and I'm here at my hotel in Uyuni. Today, we are heading to the Saw Flats. It is the largest saw flats in the world, and nothing but saw for more than 4,500 square miles. That's a lot of damn saw. Make sure you dress appropriately. And now, I'm gonna show you what you can expect if you do make it here. With its seemingly endless, sparkling horizon, the Iuni saw flats are one of South America's most spectacular sights to behold. Remote, breathtaking, and unique, Salar Uyuni is a visual feast to partake in. Out here with those steps that leads to nowhere. Stairway to Heaven is a land art piece that was created by Gaston Ugalde in 2017. It took him 12,000 salt bricks to create this art piece that leads to nowhere. They need more of these out here. All right. Well, in this area is where they harvest the salt for eating or for building houses or hotels. Okay. Can we taste the salt? Yes, we can. Good, a little, little one. Right. Alright guys, yeah, let's go. Next stop. This is the only water that's in the salt flats right now because we came in the dry season. The salt flats has two seasons, wet and dry, and it's worth visiting in either season. The wet season has its visual advantages, but the rain sometimes make it difficult to access the flats where water level is getting too high for vehicles to maneuver safely. 
The dry season, on the other hand, makes the entire SLR accessible, but you'll miss out on the mirror-like quality of the wet flats that you get in the wet season. Inca Wasi Island, our house of the Inca, is a popular stop for many visiting the majestic Uyuni salt flat. Inca Wasi Island is situated in the center of the salt flat at its highest point. This makes the island an ideal spot for visitors to enjoy amazing 360-degree panoramic views of the salt flat. Other than the spectacular bird's eye view, the island is covered with giant cactus and we chose to prepare a lunch amongst these resplendent towering giants. Fluff! Her favorite part of the day, lunch time. Except we're eating vegetables. Okay, can we see what we're having for lunch? This is uh, eggplant, this yeah. is some veggie, yeah. and it's pasta. 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 And what is this right here? You have pasta sauce? Eggplant. This is the pasta sauce. What is this? this is Lunch was awesome. Vegetarian. I'm not really a vegetarian person, but I can definitely say that I enjoyed it. Good job, buddy. What the hell is going on here? Down now, you have to go down. <laughs> Our goal on this stop is to get some crazy funny pics. That's it. That's the only goal we have for this stop. So let's go and take some pictures. The seemingly endless horizon of the saw flats makes the perfect backdrop for photography enthusiasts like myself. The horizon gives the illusion that objects nearer to the camera are larger than those that are further away. Taking perspective photos in the saw flats is a lot harder than you may think, but thankfully, our guide ID knows all about capturing them and we had so much fun doing this. Look at the dinosaur. I am. No, the no. dinosaur's in front of you. That was funny. Now kick the dinosaur. Same way? Yeah. Stop by the old hotel in the heart of Salar de Uyuni and you will spot several colorful flags hanging from a series of holes outside. Yes, they are the flags of those who have visited the salt flats. If your country's flag isn't already there, make sure to bring one and hang it. Leave your mark on one of the most surreal landscapes on earth. I just placed the first Jamaican flag out here. Look at it. See that? How does it feel to place the first Trinidad flag here? Feels amazing. There's not many firsts you could do these days. And I imagine there's tons of Trinis that have made it out here before, but still, being able to put the flag and represent is amazing. First of all, I feel a little sabotaged. Why? Because the food boo was responsible for getting me a big flag. Yeah, right? definitely sabotage. Right? But as usual, Trinis always putting us small island people down. During the tour of the Oyunisaw Flats, you feel like you're in another world. It's so surprising how the world we think we know is actually so vastly different from our perceptions. This experience was literally on a different level. We reached heights of over 16,000 feet. The adventures and the experiences provided by Latore Tours were some of my most awe-inspiring to date. Bolivia is not a luxury destination, but those who are willing to step off the beaten path will be rewarded. Thanks for having us, Bolivia. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and check out my latest video that you missed. If you want to reach out about something specific, drop a comment in the comment section below or follow me on Instagram at RogerBStills. Thanks for watching.